comfortable with it. So as we agreed with uh, Jane, she will interrupt me in case any of questions will arrive <clears throat> so that I will not be uh, possible to see those questions on the background. So. Yeah, my name is Oksandr Maximov. Uh, I'm Android engineer in SoftServe, and today's topic is Android scheduled jobs. Uh, actually, this will be an overview of existing approaches. Um, uh, initially, it was planned to cover it in more details, but when it turned out that uh, there is too much information to cover, uh, then I decided to not to put it into this one, but just to cover uh, general items, uh, what we can use and when we can use and why we can use actually them. Uh, after that, um, if uh, anyone will be interested, we can probably schedule apart sessions for uh, specific uh, items to discuss. Okay, so agenda for the day is why we need uh, uh, scheduled jobs. This is the first item. Uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, how it affects battery drain, uh, what are approaches to uh, reduce that battery drain. What are those and apps stand by? Because uh, this will be helpful uh, for discussion later when we will look into the APIs we can use on Android. Uh, regarding uh, built-in Android framework approaches, we will discuss those which are described in this slide. Actually, handler, alarm manager, sync adapter, services, and job scheduler. After that, we'll look into non-framework approaches. Actually, GCM Network Manager is uh, kind of uses Google Play services, so to use it, uh, you need them, uh, but not uh, native Android framework. That's why I put it into non-framework approaches. The same situation with Job Dispatcher. It uses uh, Google Play services, but as we uh, can see later, it's not required for it. Uh, anyway, this is an open source library which can be attached apart. And this is actually library by Firebase and now by Google. Uh, also, we'll look into open source libraries which allow us to make life easier and to use the native approaches easier. So, and we'll uh, consider some pros and cons of that third-party solutions. Okay, let's get started. Why schedule jobs? This is actually the primary motivation, is that uh, when we um, start using our phone in the morning and we have 1% of battery, oh, well, I mean 100% of our battery, and then it happens that in the end of the day, uh, like described in this graph, um, it looks like our battery is totally drained. So we have to charge our uh, device in the middle of the day or as soon as we arrive at work or something like that. And uh, after that, use it so that it doesn't die in the end of the day. Uh, what we can also see in this graph, this is actually from Battery Historian tool, is that uh, how uh, jobs are actually executed and what uh, actually is going on under the hood in Android system um, and what actually drains our battery. Here we can see uh, the main items like CPU running. We can see those items which mean that at this time CPU was running. Uh, we can see places where the screen was on. We can see which app was on top. Actually, this inter interactive tool, but it will not uh, go into details, you can check uh, GitHub for Battery Historian. Uh, also, we can see when device was in DOS mode, for example, for API 23 or API 24 on Android. Uh, we can see when uh, jobs were scheduled and the way they were executed. We can see how uh, things are actually uh, scheduled. Uh, in particular, from this graph, we can see that those things are scheduled quite often uh, and it looks like it is a little amount of a job which is executed in that particular sync and uh, each time uh, when we uh, delay a bit or we schedule with uh, minimum period, uh, our sync, it drains battery. Let's discuss why. Um, here is explanation about the radio module. Actually, uh, two main items which drain the battery of, uh, when uh, we are talking about background jobs are uh, CPU running and radio module running. Uh, in this uh, screenshot, we can see uh, about radio modules. So actually, uh, when uh, device requires any request to network, it sends a uh, packet, and here is a wake up. Uh, after that, in some time, uh, it uses a little 
uh, a little bit less power from battery and waits for the packets uh, being sent. When it's sent, we can see the spike here, then we wait a bit until the packet is received, and after that time, which is the main point uh, here, um, this radio model is uh, keep awaken, uh, and actually it if we have several uh, wake-ups of radio model, for example, several syncs with little period, like in three seconds or in four seconds, or a bit longer. Uh, in this case, a radio model can not slim, sleep even at all. So what we want to achieve? If we have different applications, uh, they will drain battery like with this uh, area. So we will wait for some time and uh, in this time we actually uh, will not execute a lot of uh, stuff but uh, our battery will be drained a bit. Uh, another application will be will drain it and, and yet another will be drained. So what we can do is to uh, batch those operations so that they can be uh, combined and executed on the top of uh, efficiency. and. Um, Actually, by batching, we will uh, increase the time when device will sleep. What are the basic principles recommended by Google? Actually, this is from Google I.O. Uh, 2016. Uh, these are reduced deferocalists on actually batch. Uh, this is quite natural, right, that we need to reduce all background activity if we want to reduce uh, battery drain. So, uh, but in many cases, uh, even if we wrote a very cool application which is optimized very good, we use um, as less as possible of the network activity. Uh, in that cases, what we can try to achieve is to defer our jobs so that uh, they can be executed in appropriate time. We will talk about it a bit later. And in the cases when uh, our job should be executed, uh, no matter which condition are, uh, what we want to achieve is to coalesce, so actually to uh, budge several executions like it was shown in the previous slide. Okay, if you want more motivation on this or more, uh, uh, like background, uh, why it is important, you can look into these links. They all will be shared later after the presentation and they will give uh, a good background actually. Okay, one more thing to uh, consider also is DOS, of course. It was introduced in Android M Marshmallow, which is API 23, and uh, what it actually does, it uh, puts device into the deep DOS. Uh, there is a difference between light dose and deep dose, which was introduced in the next API, uh, which will be the next slide. But here we can see that what actually happening and how it affects executing uh, the jobs, things, or vice versa. So actually, network access is suspended. No any jobs uh, executed. Uh, sync manager uh, it actually doesn't execute what it uh, should. Uh, there are no alarms. So if you even schedule uh, set exact, and uh, that alarm will not fire uh, when device will be in those mode. Uh, what you will need to use uh, for such situations we will see later. Uh, weight clocks also ignored, also we'll describe later, and no GPS and Wi-Fi scans. Okay, so which changes we had in Android N uh, is splitting of light dose and uh, deep dose. Actually, in this case, um, device can go into light dose. Uh, there is no requirement for it to be stationary to go into that mode. Uh, it can execute some uh, jobs. Um, I mean, uh, not those which are from job scheduler, which we'll uh, see later, or things. Uh, we may use alarms, wake locks, uh, GPS, or Wi-Fi. 
and uh, in some time, which is a bit uh, not very big period, we will have maintenance window when uh, all of the jobs can be executed together. Uh, so when we go to deep dose, actually we go into that which one was introduced in Marshmallow. Uh, so we add all of that restrictions uh, which were described pre previously. Also, uh, we need to consider uh, implicit statically declared broadcast receivers, which means those which we declare in Android manifest file, but not via the code. Uh, and so there is also no possibility to run unbound services except foreground services. Yeah, one more thing to consider is uh, those in app standby. Uh, those is more for device state, while app standby is for application state, so when it was not used for some time. Okay, so what we can use? Uh, we can see here the easiest approach we can use is actually Handler API. Uh, it was introduced in API 1, so uh, everyone can use it. It is very simple, uh, and actually it is uh, designed to be executed and to schedule some uh, execution during the lifetime of your application. This is the main point. That's why it's good to be executed uh, when you schedule for less than 60 seconds, but it is not suitable for situations when uh, you need to schedule for more than 60 seconds. Uh, just because uh, your application UI can, so actually you can just lock your screen and uh, there will be uh, nothing shown in your UI according to your application. Uh, so you will have no need to execute that uh, job, for example, I mean, for UI purposes. Another one, which is also for all APIs, is our manager. Uh, here we can see example of uh, batching, actually. So here we can see a uh, case when we set exact time of execution. Uh, if we use that part of our manager, uh, then uh, your application will actually behave as it is expected with exact execution, but at the same time, uh, it will not respect the uh, kind of batching of the uh, executions. Uh, and sorry, can I please ask someone mute? Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, if we use inexact um, API of Alarm Manager. In this case, uh, our application will be executed together with other applications and will achieve that effect which was described, uh, was described previously. Uh, and yeah, uh, Alarm Manager is actually designed for cases when your application is not correct, currently running. Uh, also, one benefit is that you can um, actually affect those modes with its API when set hello while idle. So that one exists. So here it's descri uh, described. Okay, um, this was introduced in API 23 plus. Yeah, uh, so uh, for which cases it better suits is for local usages, not for network related task, which is example. Uh, for example, uh, we can set exact execution of uh, some task uh, in the background, uh, for example, at 7 a.m. This was the case which many developers used uh, since that API arrived and tried to schedule, for example, some synchronizations or some background jobs. Uh, after that, uh, network providers saw that if applications uh, with a lot of installations and in Google Play, for example, like 1 million, were accessing the internet uh, by that uh, what they were providing uh, at 7 a.m., then uh, that network was actually affected and that network was blocked. Uh, in that case, uh, they asked Google to see what is the problem and Google identified that yes, uh, many developers are not using uh, API appropriately, so actually what is better to use for Laram Manager is uh, inexact execution of tasks and this will allow to um, batch operations. Uh, okay, uh, so let's go next. Uh, what is the main uh, 
thing which uh, dismotivates to use LR Manager is its complexity because of API changes, uh, as represented in this flow. And actually, this is a flow uh, which was represented on Google Plus by Jan Lake uh, from Google, and he said that here is the way we should use LR Manager, guys, please go ahead. And when people look into it, they just see what a mess. Why should they uh, use that complex uh, flow? What it causes is boilerplate. It should be implemented in each application using LR Manager uh, in case you support different API levels of Android. Uh, the one thing to consider also is that uh, alarms are wiped out if you uh, reboot your device. Uh, there is a solution for it. Uh, when you should register, receive boot complete, receiver and uh, reschedule appropriate alarms when you need them. Also, the con of Alarm Manager is that uh, it's not considering network or changing state like it uh, Job Scheduler does. Uh, in case of periodic alarms, they will be executed only if interval between them is more than 60 seconds, which is actually optimization because uh, uh, Google tries to force that um, behavior that you should not execute uh, some tasks very frequently. Uh, one more thing is that you need to implement your own wake clock policy because as soon as you out of uh, broadcast receivers on receive method, your wake clock will be released. So uh, you should actually start a service, and this is actually how many people behave. Uh, they start a service and um, probably should extend uh, wakeful. Uh, I mean, it should use uh, in conjunction with wakeful broadcast receiver, uh, which will start appropriate service, uh, or in the service implement your own wake clock policy. And one more thing, which was reported by users, that even if you use set exact on key card devices, uh, actually it may still delay execution, which is bad for users. Another thing is sync adapters. Uh, they are primarily designed for sync-related functionality when you have something on your local device and something in the cloud or in the network which, uh, with which you should sync. And um, to implement it, you actually need fake authenticator, for example, and uh, content provider. If you already have them, uh, it's not so complex to implement. Uh, and actually, it uh, considers many of things which Job Scheduler does. I mean, it respects device state, it can reschedule and batch according to uh, optimizations. Uh, but um, yeah, it's still considered to be more complex than other APIs. Uh, one more thing about services. Uh, you remember we talked about foreground services, right? So in uh, this, they are recommended for applications, for example, like music apps, when you uh, need to execute something in the background uh, for a long period of time. Uh, but users reported that uh, in some time when those activated, uh, even foreground services can be muted. Uh, in that cases, uh, uh, Google developers, they um, entered that communication thread and they uh, suggested that one of workarounds is just to run your service uh, on a different process. In that case, it will not be muted by those mode. Okay, one more thing in this uh, area is that uh, Android documentation says that for uh, periodic work, you should not use started services, and even in the future, uh, Android platform may not support them. Okay, we arrived at Job Scheduler. Uh, this one is for API 21 Plus, which is from Lollipop Android. Uh, what it helps us to do is actually to execute uh, our jobs, jobs being uh, based on specific device conditions, for example, like uh, network conditions. Uh, it can be metered on unmetered network. Uh, device state, is it idle, is it charging, or something like that. Uh, besides, uh, since API 23, uh, they also introduced a way to trigger on content provider changes. Why? Because uh, in Android, um, such actions as new picture and new video were muted uh, since, since API 23, uh, just to save the battery. And one more thing is uh, 
connectivity changed. But this specific thing, which is triggering on content provider changes, is about new picture or new video. You can also use that thing, for example, when contact is added, you can subscribe, like very similar to subscribe flow uh, when you receive that um, and your job is triggered and you can execute what you want. Also in that API, uh, the jobs can be prioritized according to which application is in the foreground. So most likely will be executed those which are in foreground, which is quite logically, right? And uh, uh, it can also scale based on RAM availability. What are the pros is the API which is fluent and which is the base for other approaches. It is widely recommended if you see that all resources which I was talking about in the slide more motivation, uh, almost everywhere it's recommended to be used. It respects device state, which is good. It allows to achieve us effect, which was described on the first slides. And uh, it's already running on the way clock. You know, there is no need to implement your own handling of way clocks. What are the cons is that it's, it's only since API 21, so you need to use some backports. Uh, there is no support uh, leap for that or something like that, and how to uh, bypass it, we'll discuss a bit further. Uh, also minus is that some functionality added only in API 23. What it can cause is that uh, it may look like the LR manager in the future. Uh, you remember that scary flow, right? So when you have a lot of ifs, uh, depending on which API you use, we will use specific items. So actually it can soon become such a thing also. And um, if we have uh, periodic uh, jobs to be scheduled, which have network dependency, uh, since Android N, uh, the period, the minimum period to be scheduled is 15 minutes, which is quite limitation of the system. Uh, also, you should consider power save mode. Okay, more things to consider were described in Google Plus. Um, for example, uh, the periodic jobs. Um, for them, period is treated as deadline. So, so for example, if you set uh, the job to be executed when your device on network, uh, and also you set deadline for that execution, even in the, if you will not have network available at the moment, but deadline uh, is at this moment, uh, then uh, your job will still be executed. Uh, work around it to use set override deadline, and actually described in the blog post. Uh, on pre-n, jobs uh, which were scheduled with this uh, thing and uh, which execute longer than the time which you specify, they will be rescheduled. And actually, this is the bug of Android which was uh, fixed on n. Uh, you should consider also that jobs are running the main processes. So in case you have a service which is running on different processes than, the, your, than your main application, uh, uh, the IDs of jobs which are scattered, they can actually overlap, so uh, processes cannot see them and um, job manager will behave incorrectly. Uh, one more limit is to have 100 jobs. I don't think that actually this is a minus, but just you should uh, know about these things uh, exist. Uh, why I don't think it's mine is because actually it's bad practice to have 100 jobs. If you even use a job scheduler, it is considered that you will use for a bit longer running tasks than those which you can use for with async task loaders or something like that. Okay, we switching. We are switching to non-framework approaches. Uh, the GCM Network Manager is actually that one backport which I was talking about of job scheduler API. This is recommended to use in case you support parallel lip of devices. Uh, but the minus is that it uses Google Play services under the hood. Uh, at the same time, we uh, should understand that it does not require Google Cloud Messaging, which is quite a frequent uh, a question about this uh, thing. Uh, this is primarily designed for internet-related tasks, uh, but in fact, uh, people who use it, actually they can use their whatever they want, use any jobs. 
uh, OK. And uh, since API 21, it uses job scheduler, uh, which causes the minuses, which I'll describe a bit further. Also, you can pass bundles to store uh, as part of your task to be executed later. OK. In case you need uh, some example of that usage, it is described under this link, which also will be shared. Um, what are the minuses? Actually, as I mentioned, uh, is dependence in Google Play services. As we know, it's not available in China, for example, and some devices. Uh, as Again, as in situation with Alarm Manager, uh, the tasks can be wiped out in case Google Play services are updated. There is a specific API for that, uh, which is called Uninitialize Task, where you should reschedule uh, your tasks. Uh, because of the fact that GC Network Manager uses Job Scheduler under the hood, it inherits its problem. This is quite logically right. Uh, let's consider another case. For example, you have GCM set up and you receive a regular message arriving from network and it arrives when uh, we are in those maintenance window. So we are, we are actually executing a lot of jobs uh, in this case, uh, GCM Task Services acquires wake log just for three minutes. So in case you want to download any attachment in the background in this maintenance window, it will not allow you to do so. Uh, one of the solutions is as soon as you receive that GCM regular message, uh, you can start a task uh, based on conditions so that when device will come out of those, the task will be executed. Firebase Job Dispatcher is quite new thing, which is open source, which is on GitHub. Uh, we can see here that, in fact, comparing to others, um, not many, not so many stars for now. It was introduced uh, previous Google I/O uh, 2016 in the summer. Uh, what it doesn't. It is actually promoted uh, by Google as a replacement of GCM Network Manager. If you try to Google for GCM Network Manager, you will see that there is kind of a note that, guys, here is a replacement, Firebase Job Dispatcher, please use it, and this is great. Uh, under the hood, it also uses Google Play services, like it's not a surprise. Um, and uh, But in fact, uh, to use it, you can specify them as a driver. This can be this driver can be replaced, and instead of Google Play services, you can use other APIs, or actually, uh, you can uh, write your own uh, implementation of uh, Google Play services, and then uh, your usage of Firebase Job Dispatcher will consider devices which don't have Google Play services. Uh, this is customizable, I already mentioned it. Uh, what are the minuses? Actually, now the version of this library is 0.5.2, oh, which means that uh, actually it's not production. And if you go into the issues page, uh, you can see that uh, there are quite many uh, open issues. Uh, what is the problem? Not in the amount of the issues, but in the delay uh, when people get response to them. Uh, because uh, as soon as it was released in the summer previous year, many people posted about issues and they received feedback for, didn't receive feedback actually for quite a long time because of that, as they thought that actually what is promoted by Google is not supported by Google, they thought so. Uh, but in a bit later period, uh, Google guys or Firebase guys uh, started to answer some issues uh, and to address them. Uh, we'll see how it will go further. Um, another thing here to note is that uh, people who are requested to implement Firebase Job Dispatcher, for example, those uh, who implemented libraries based on basic Android approaches, uh, they actually don't see any reason to update to Firebase Job Dispatcher now because all functionalities in it already provided by GCM Network Manager. Uh, and to use Firebase Job Dispatcher in its current state, it's quite dangerous because of the issues, as I mentioned. You can see those references to see kind of proofs 
why people uh, don't want to use it right now. Okay, and uh, right now uh, to set up uh, this library, uh, you have two flows in case you don't have dependency on Google Play services in particular for the GCM part, uh, you should compile it like this one. Another one option is this one. Uh, this is the screenshot from their GitHub documentation and they say that this is temporary requirement. Probably it will be changed in the future and many people hope that it will be so. Yeah, uh, we arrived at third party leaves. Hooray. Um, one thing is, the first thing to mention is uh, Android job library, uh, which is actually provided by Evernote. Um, there are many people who like that uh, library and actually use it uh, because it uh, provides kind of wrapper uh, over Alarm Manager, Job Scheduler, and GCM Network Manager. So you should not even think about uh, what will be used under the hood. You should just know that this library does it for you. Uh, you can go into that page and to see the uh, FAQ uh, where described how to use it and you'll see that it's quite simple. It uh, uses unified API which is very similar to Job Scheduler but under the hood uh, this method actually which is the core of that library as I think uh, it checks which API is supported and depending on that uh, it uses appropriate uh, underlying framework uh, tools. Uh, what is good? It is single API. What is good is that it avoids boilerplate. Also, it's maintained and improved. If you go into issues on GitHub, you'll see that uh, actually uh, developer, um, author of that library, uh, responds very fast and uh, he solved a lot of issues. There were a lot of them, but many of them were closed. So this is a good thing to consider. Uh, minuses is that it forced to respect highest limits. As we said previously for periodic uh, jobs, for example, uh, the minimum interval for which you can schedule is 15 minutes. So as soon as this is a rubber, they are forced to respect that limits. Also, this library uses own login in case you want to replace them uh, to not uh, reveal some kind of information if you put into extras of the jobs some sensitive information it is not encrypted by default so uh, you may want to replace that logging and uh, to bypass somehow uh, the fact that the data is not encrypted uh, as I said as it, it is just a wrapper all of the cons of previous APIs described they are applied here too uh, and there are several issues which, among which I uh, selected two, like uh, main, in my opinion, uh, which should be considered. Those we can be found also on GitHub page if you want more details. Uh, Smart Scheduler, it was uh, inspired by uh, Android Job. Uh, library. Uh, it was implemented by Hypertrack guys. Actually, Hypertrack is a company which is uh, working on some GPS, real-time GPS solutions. Uh, and they investigated that area um, quite in deep, I may uh, say. Um, they are not so used as uh, Android job, for example, uh, but probably uh, because not many people uh, need actually this API. Uh, why? Actually, this is not wrapper around uh, what Android job library does. It is wrapper of a handler. As we remember, this is for uh, items and for scheduled jobs with period less than 60 seconds. Uh, Alert manager and GCM network. Here we can see another core method of this library, uh, again, in my own opinion, uh, which just checks when we schedule the job, we check for interval. If this is below the threshold, we'll use handler. In case it's higher and we need any of device state checks, uh, it will switch to job uh, using actually GCM network manager. And in case those are not required, we'll use Alarm Manager. 
here is example uh, how we can use it we can set up the callback we can build our job we can specify our requirements uh, if it requires charging network type which which interval it should be executed also we should uh, set periodic if it should be so and uh, after that we can add job into this scheduler so which is actually kind of very similar to our manager or something like that um, yeah so what are the pros is that uh, you can use this library and this wrapper actually for jobs which should be executed for less than 30 seconds uh, it considers power c mode in conjunction with network dependency as we remember uh, job scheduler doesn't allow to do it uh, cons is that again you need google play services because it uses gcm network manager and uh, primary issues he, uh, issue here is that uh, those jobs which are scheduled as handler are not triggered in case screen is off. Uh, in my opinion, this is uh, kind of designed by Google because in all cases where uh, they promote using handlers, uh, they mostly recommend it for things when you should update something in UI. So it supposes that your screen will be on and uh, it will be not a big delay after uh, you are out of your application. Uh, okay, uh, let's just have a rest a bit from that uh, job schedulers and something like that. This one uh, library, which is Android Priority Job Queue, uh, about not scheduling. This is about actual execution of tasks. Why I included it into this presentation is that because uh, many developers, when they start looking into any approaches to execute their jobs in background uh, they will find it uh, in by googling and uh, they will ask questions so what is this one what is the difference from previous libraries shouldn't i use just native approach or should i use different library or something like that and many people come into this uh, library on github uh, as you can see this is like by people and there are many forks so but the primary design for it is uh, to use async tasks, loaders and services with thread pools correctly instead of scheduling. And here is a comment by authors so that they created to have more control over non UI thread. Uh, they needed a way to prioritize jobs, persist them across application restarts and group based on resources they access. Uh, actually, it was implemented two years before job scheduler arrived that's why uh, persistent across application restarts was new for that library and that's why many people started using it uh, also it was migrated from version 1 to version 2 where they actually uh, i mean that library allows to use you scheduling apis of android let's compare for example um, to job scheduler in case it is uh, this library which is job queue it is designed to run all your background tasks while android api which is job scheduler is designed for those which you can defer so that's why i'm talking about scheduled jobs in this uh, presentation uh, if we compare it to previous library one of them is which is android job by evernote this one runs tasks itself uh, so those schedulers, which are GCM Network Manager or Job Scheduler, they are just for waking device at the right moment. In case you need an example of usage, you can just go to this uh, GitHub page and to see a good architectural approach. This is actually was uh, a YouTube video, uh, as now uh, author of this library is uh, working in Google, and he showed how to use this approach, and also you can see that he github uh, to see example of that library usage uh, okay i will not stop in details under those items if there will be questions we'll return back to this slide uh, the last one we will look into uh, in this presentation is the job manager 
again, why I included it in this presentation? Because it is very similar to uh, Android Priority Job Queue. Not many people use it, actually. Uh, the main difference uh, from that one is arbitrary requirements. Not actually many people require that, so probably this is the reason why uh, not many people use this library. And also, uh, the difference is that they support encrypted encrypting, and this is kind of one of benefits uh, for people who want their data to be encrypted and to not be accessed in Android uh, system when those uh, jobs are scheduled or something like that. Uh, they needed concept of priority, so they simplified their code, and that's it. That is the difference. Okay. In case you need even more approaches, you can actually just go to androidarsenal.com and to search within those groups, which are described here, and to look for more approaches. Uh, but in my experience, uh, I selected those which are used most uh, among developer commu developers community. Uh, also, many of them, which are actually in background processing group, are related not to scheduling jobs, to batching or something like that, but actually to uh, about just execution on non-UI thread, as we described to last libraries, for example. That was heavy presentation, I know. Uh, I want to thank you for that, that you listened to the end, and it's time for questions. Probably you can ask questions in Russian, Ukrainian, if you want. And I'll probably just translate them and answer in English.